Are you listening? Damn. Hello, everybody. My name is Megan with Loserly VSG. I had VSG surgery on December 27th. I can't, 28th. I always forget. December 27th, 2018. I have lost 170 pounds. I am 100. No, I'm not 100. I am 32 years old and I am 5'7". So I'm getting ready to, so I'm getting ready to go on a skin removal plastics journey with Alejandro Galvez in Tijuana, Mexico. We're about, oh, 15 days out. And so this will be the beginning of the series or the taping. I'm gonna try to do a lot better than what I have been doing, um, but I'm hoping to break it down with like a video showing everything leading up to and then while I'm there and then of course everything after. So, like I said before, um, I've lost 170 pounds, some of that before surgery, some of that after VSG surgery and it has left me with loose skin, especially in the arm area. This sweatshirt's kind of holding it in, but um, arms are a bad area for me. I used to have big boobs. Um, my whole life I've had big boobs, and I never thought they would go away, but with this amount of weight loss, they definitely have. So I rely on a bra to make it look like I really even have boobs daily, um, but they are pretty deflated, so there's a lot of extra skin. They're pointing down. And I've also had a baby, also breastfed some, but mostly just the weight loss. My stomach, and then my thighs have a little bit, and then my back, but we're not doing my thighs. So, I knew that I wanted to have uh, skin removal, and I knew that the doctor I was wanting had kind of a, I don't know, like a wait list, but also it took a while to get back to you. So... September 9th, 2019, I got on his website. I answered all the questions there. I submitted my naked pictures, um, just how they want you to do it. And then on November 21st of 2019, I got my quote back from him. And he um, thought I should get, just based off of the pictures and my questions and answers, an extended arm lift, a brassier torsoplasty, extended tummy tuck, an FDL, and a breast lift with implants. And I agree with all of that, even though I don't love the idea of the FDL. Um, so going into a little bit of detail with this stuff, obviously extended arm lift, um, it's all about my arms, but pretty much from my elbows down to my armpits. A uh, brassiere torsoplasty is um, your back, like across your bra, your bra line. The extended tummy tuck goes hip to hip, you know, horizontally down there, right above like your pubic area. And then the FDL is the scar going up the middle of your belly where he's just pulling everything tight. And then a breast lift with implant, so bringing them up and implanting them. Um, so like I said, I agreed with all of that. I was a little unsure of the FDL, but when he sees me in person, if he still thinks I need to have it, then we're going to do it. So he also, so in that they let me know the price of everything and they let me know I would need to um, stay in the hospital for two days and I would stay in a hotel for five days. So the hospital and the hotel are right beside each other and there is 24 hour staff in both spots. And then the next step was like if you want to go ahead with this then you need to reserve Okay, I'm back. My camera died, so it's been a couple days and it's in the morning, so I'm in my pajamas and my hair is just uh, looking as good as it did when I woke up. Um, I think what I was saying was um, once you get your quote and if you're okay with it, and then you they will send you the wire information, so you have to wire the money to them for a deposit to pick a time. Um, and so that deposit is $1,000 and it does go towards your end balance. And I've never done that before. So it was a big deal having to go into the bank and just the person working there 
didn't really know the process either and she's looking through a book and I was like sweating and um, it was kind of scary but we got it done so once that went through I um, I had record of it so I took a picture of it so you have to email them back um, like confirmation that you've done it you have to email um, BC plastics back which is who does the surgery and show them proof so I did that and then I knew, so in November 2019, I had reached 172 pounds. And I knew I was comfortable there. And so I was like, I want to maintain this for six months, maybe a year. Sit right there. Before I... He went to work? Um, before I had surgery. Um, and so... I have for a year, well it's almost November, we're in October now, maintained that weight and so I chose to schedule a year out. So that was November 2019, I'm going to be having skin removal surgery November November 2020. I know they are booked um, but they have cancellations all the time so I guess you just throw out dates that you're interested in, they let you know if that's open and I think I had chose like November 10th but they had November 12th open so that was fine with me. So then I was, um, that was my date, they had my deposit and we're pretty much set. Um, and then, I don't know when it was, maybe a couple weeks ago, so maybe like a month out from surgery, well, two months, let me, let me back it up here, they, I knew that a month out, they were going to want, and they send you this, um, CBC, complete blood count, CMP, um, complete metabolic panel, and if you're diabetic, they want something and a list of vitamins. So two months out or maybe three months out, um, I had my doctor order labs and now not all primary doctors are on board with this. Mine is. And so um, she ordered labs for me so I could just kind of see where I was at with like my hemoglobin and um, I needed to see like if I need to make any changes. But my hemoglobin was a 14 and everything else looked fine. And so then a month out, I redid the labs and my hemoglobin was 14.5. Everything was fine and I sent it along with some paperwork they send you. So um, I can't even, I, I should have like taken, I probably have copies or I probably have an email of what they sent me. But um, now with COVID, they had to add on some more money. Uh, so they sent you that explaining that and you have to sign saying like you're gonna add that to your balance I've come this far and even though I would not like to pay more money um, I agreed and um, it, They just wanted more details on like my height my weight who's coming with me um, and there was just some other paperwork that you had to review and sign and send back so I signed I did my labs and got those results and I sent everything back and then I got an email a couple of days later saying we've received everything and you're approved to approve for surgery we're just waiting for your COVID test a COVID test has to be done 10 days before surgery so I will be getting that next week like November 3rd or 4th my surgery again is on November 12th so just as long as it's in, within that 10 day time frame get that done and send it to them and you're good to go you send them oh also I had to send them like my flight itinerary so I actually got lucky my dad is my companion uh, my husband will stay here with our children and my mom just felt the safest with my dad going with me children. no there's two there's you and Gracie but shh. um and my mom felt the safest with my dad going so that's who's going with me and he was um, on it with the flights so he we're doing Southwest he found some flights he booked a flight on the way back that was non-stop um, but I'm guessing because of COVID there's been a couple changes since then he keeps getting emails about these times being pushed around there is um, certain time frames that you have to get to the airport for the person to pick you up so you have a driver that comes from bc plastics meets you at the airport and drives you to 
the hospital and there's time frames they give you like come in from nine to one like get into the airport from nine to one well we were originally supposed to get there like at 9 30 and now we're not going to get there till 12 30 which still meets the cutoff but kind of pushing it and then on the way back um you're supposed to leave the hotel believe between like i might get this wrong but let's say 12 and 3 um but my flight they changed it to 11 30 um to leave and so i called andy and i let him know and just made sure this was okay and he was like yes we understand and he's like if anyone gives you any problem just let me know so um i followed that up with an email to him just saying hey per our conversation today just a reminder like this is what we talked about and this is what you told me and so um hopefully everything will be smooth with that hopefully there won't be any more plane changes um and with that my dad also contacted the airport or the airline and let them know we would need wheelchair assistance on the way back and they gave him some direction on what to ask and who to ask for that some things i've done to prepare in the meantime is um especially as we get closer to the day eating foods that are um, good for building hemoglobin if you're needing it. Um, you can look those up on the internet and get all kinds of ideas. I haven't changed my vitamin routine. It's the same as what it's always been. Um, and continue. I work out often and so I'm still working out. I'm also adding in crunches, push-ups, um, just little things like that to strengthen my muscles. Um, for my arms and my back and my belly and my legs, even though I'm not getting leg work done, I will need strength in my legs um, to help me get around. So just focusing on that as well and getting in all the water that I can get in, lotioning my skin, just making sure I'm in the best health, the best skin that I can be. But what I was going to say is I am part of Dr. Galvez's Facebook group on, on Facebook and there's people from years ago to now to all different ages getting all kinds of different procedures done they're asking all kinds of questions so social media is really a blessing in when you're trying to prepare for surgery it was for weight loss surgery and it is now for skin removal surgery just diving in and getting the most information you can asking the questions you can from people that will support you and help you through your journey so i have that there and then instagram has a few people that have dedicated um, just their time there for example a girl named um, passport to plastics or something like that on Instagram um, she's just documented the entire thing just to help show what it's like there and I plan and I plan on taping as much as I can there because I know how much it helped me when people videoed their experience I've, it made me feel safe and calm and like I knew what I was getting into and it also helped I could show my family like it's not scary this is what it is because of course you hear surgery in Mexico and some people get scared so it's not scary at least to me it's not I'm excited I'm ready um there was a, a period of time there where um I was having some anxiety so I don't usually suffer from anxiety right before I got married probably like four months out from me getting married I was, um, I kept thinking I was, um, dying essentially. Like I kept feeling lumps in my body, pain in my body. And, um, I kept going to the doctor and I was just like, what's going on with me? Like, do I have cancer? And I, and not trying to make light of that at all. I really did believe like I was dying of something. And after going to the doctor, um, probably five times in one month, they uh, made me sit down and, um, do a questionnaire and kind of talk to me about me having some anxiety. They talked a lot about like, are you sure you want to be getting married? And I had no doubts in wanting to get married, but it must have just been like the stress of the prep of this big life change I was about to go through that was causing me to have this anxiety that I'd never had before. Um, and once they tried to put me on medication, I kind of snapped myself out of it. Like anytime I felt anything coming on, I was just like, knock it off you just it's just anxiety nothing's wrong with you and it eventually just faded out and it, I got married in 2015 so I haven't had any problems since then um but a couple weeks ago um I started having this pelvic pain and I was going to um my doctor a lot and she was doing all kinds of tests and everything was coming back negative and I got an ultrasound and there was nothing shown and um 
I was, I felt very stressed. I was breaking out. I was just, uh, just something was wrong with me. And then I was able to, um, kind of talk it out with myself. And I was like, look, you're getting ready to have a major life change. Like you're going to have some of your body cut off. Um, and so maybe it's some anxiety. And once I was able to be honest with myself about that, um, it's gone away. So I don't think that's unusual to be a little stressed out, a little anxious about a big life change, but just be aware that, um, in talking it out, I mean, I, I said to my husband several times, like, I need help with, like from him. Like, I need to talk this out. Something's going on with me. Like I'm, I'm feeling very anxious. I'm feeling very nervous. And even though I didn't know that I was feeling like anxious about surgery, I just knew something was going on with me. So, um, that's me just assuming that's what was going on with myself. So we're okay now. We're about 12 days out. Um, I'm going to my shoe. Okay. We're about 12 days out. I'm just wanting to get there and kind of get it done. I'm actually most nervous about like the IVs that I'll probably have in both hands. I despise IVs. So knowing that I might have to have two is frightening to me. Um, and just the logistics of it. Like I've never had a catheter. Uh, just weird things. Like you'd think I'd be like worried about the cuts in my arms, in my armpits. And I'm really just nervous about the little things like IVs and catheters. So I'm ready to get there, get it done and start the healing process. Um, and I'm also done want to be done packing. I'm like slowly gathering all the supplies that I'll need to um, take care of myself after. I plan on doing like what I've packed, but I've already packed everything in this bag. And so I'm like thinking of having to take it out is, sounds exhausting to me, but I'll eventually go over some things that I bought for after and what I've packed and just get into it a little more. But there's the rundown of, <clears throat> kind of how this whole thing started. Good job. How this whole thing started and how I've got to where I am now. And um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions and if I've missed anything, I will try to answer it below or in the next um, few videos. Thanks, bye guys.